You may not catch your attention at first glance, but the more you look, the more details you see. And the more details you see, the more you'll be drawn into this picture. Good morning, New Yorkers. Looking for another beautiful day here in the city. One of the most famous and controversial works of art ever created, Las Meninas. It was chosen as the world's greatest painting in a 1985 illustrated London news poll of artists and critics. But why? What makes this painting so mysterious? Let's take a look at it. Las Meninas is Spanish for the Maids of Honor. It is a 1656 painting by the Spanish Baroque painter Diego Velázquez. For centuries, the best painter was chosen by the king for portraits that will show the ruler of that period in the most magnificent way. These portraits helped him to express their emotions and to display their importance and virtue to their people in the kingdom. They will show off their wealth and beauty by showing their surroundings and clothing in the picture. Some of the portraits have been used to show their power, their commanding presence, and their superiority by painting them on a horse the king was showing how mighty he was. Because back then the horse represented the country, and by holding a rearing horse with one hand, they symbolized how dominant and powerful they were in ruling the country. For King Philip IV, one day, as he was walking down the palace hallway, he saw the portraits of his ancestors, and then suddenly this thought struck him. One day my children will walk down the same hallway, and remember all of their ancestors through these portraits. Therefore, King Philip IV commissioned Diego Velázquez to paint a portrait of himself and his family. There was a long-standing, strictly professional relationship between him and the king with a shared passion for art. During the golden age of the Spanish Empire, besides being the leading artist, Diego Velázquez served for over 30 years as the official painter for the royal court of King Philip IV and his family. Back to the picture. Diego Velázquez didn't paint a powerful king in Las Meninas, unlike other artists, right? When we look at the x-ray image of the painting, we see that Velázquez painted it almost the same and didn't change it much. It seems like he only changed the direction his head was facing and his posture, from leaning towards the canvas to standing upright confidently. And when we look at the finished picture, we see 11 individuals and a dog appearing in a large room in the Spanish court of King Philip IV. At the center, Infanta Margarita Teresa is the first thing that catches our attention. The light from the windows focuses heavily on her, so I believe this is the reason why we initially took notice of her. She was a six-year-old daughter of the king who later became the wife of the Holy Roman Emperor Leopold I. Velázquez also painted Margarita Teresa many times before his death in 1660. And in this picture, he painted her surrounded by certain ladies-in-waiting, bodyguards, a dwarf, and a dog. On her right, the first menina kneels to offer the princess a drink in a red jug on a silver tray. But just as the princess is about to grab the jug, she looks away as if something more important had caught her attention. The second menina stands on the left of the young princess, ready to curtsy. To the left of Isabel, while one of the court dwarfs stands upright beside her, the other dwarf, the king's jester dwarf, tries to rouse, awaken the sleepy dog, and give the picture some movement. Dwarves were historically treated with poor respect in society because of their physical appearance. The first dwarves whose histories have been recorded are those who were employed as court dwarves, and unfortunately they were treated between kings and queens and given as gifts to other members of the court. But that enabled them to play a significant part in the ceremonial culture and have a close relationship with the king. In the shadows, there are two people behind Isabel, and she is the princess's chaperone, seems to be saying something to this unidentified guard. At the door in the background, we see the court official Jose Velasquez standing on the threshold. He seems like posing while gently drawing aside the curtain and letting the light in which makes it unclear whether he is standing still or going up or down the stairs. He was a chamberlain of the palace and he was also in charge of the royal tapestry works. Also, Jose Velasquez and Diego Velasquez had close ties, 
but they were fierce competitors for applying in the same court positions. And for the king and queen, unlike other pictures, in this picture, they are right there in the back, drawn in a blurred mirror on the back wall, painted from Velasquez's point of view. There could be a connection between the political period and the personal issues of King Philip IV and the blurred mirror. And this picture was painted late in Philip's reign, so it coincides with Spain's war with France. Also at that time, the Spanish Empire was experiencing material and moral losses as a result of the defeat in the Thirty Years' War. So the country was in decline. And with this blurred mirror, he could be pointing out the declining firm power of Spain during his reign. Or perhaps Velasquez used the reflection in the mirror to create an illusion, as the use of mirror reflections at the time was most likely influenced by Nguyen Ike's Ornolfino portrait, which was also hung in Philip's palace, so Velasquez most likely had seen that masterpiece. So maybe the mirror illusion could also indicate that life and art are both illusions. And above the mirror, we see copies of two oil sketch Dutch paintings by Peter Paul Rubens, redrawn by Velasquez. The painting on the left portrays Minerva punishing Arachne, whereas the painting on the right portrays Apollo's victory over Marcias. These pictures both emphasize the dangerous competition between gods and the mortals. And the last person left in this picture is Diego Velasquez, the painter of this controversial picture or masterpiece. He painted himself standing behind his enormous canvas painting this masterpiece, or the weavers. Or, as we can see the reflection in the mirror, maybe he was painting the king and queen. And perhaps by painting himself in this picture, he was trying to emphasize the importance of painting since it wasn't appreciated as much as other arts back then. This detail may also emphasize his own role as the creator and master of the artwork. Or he was just implying that everyone in this picture is equal. Or maybe all of these things have different meaning behind them, because it made Pablo Picasso reinterpret and recreate 58 variations of this painting and try to understand its enigma by drawing it. Last but not least, the source of all the confusion. Where are we viewing this painting from? Considering these figures in the picture, are they looking at you or the king and queen? We are in the shoes of the 17th century ruler of Spain. This 10 by 9 foot canvas is assumed to be a 3D painting as it creates an optical illusion that seems to go beyond the physical confines of space by creating a three-dimensional interior that we can walk into. In fact, this three-dimensional interior was larger before. The short movie that portrays this painting, 8 and 9 seconds in the Alcazar, has been produced by Eve Sussman. She includes a version of the original painting and also assumes that the painting was much larger, but it was damaged by a fire at the royal palace and resized several times. This picture may have multiple secrets, or not at all, but it's certain that it got everyone talking about it, including me. But it could be different than what we think it is. I'm gonna mention another book, I'm sorry, but I have to. In Ulysses, James Joyce quotes that I've put in so many enigmas and puzzles that it will keep the professors busy for centuries arguing over what I meant. And that's the only way of ensuring one's immortality. It's in the introduction part. After I read it, I left the picture as it is. James Joyce achieved that immortality with this book. So did Velasquez with the Las Meninas. And that was all. Thank you for watching my video. See you in the next one. So please sabar kara sara kabar sara kabar whatever please sab sara
uh, I want to reach one million.